to the Brookfield Selectmen's Meeting of Tuesday, June 4th, 2017. Would you like to rise and we'll salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank from 6419 for $14,018.48. You have that motion. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I would also like to approve Selectman's minutes from 42619. You have that motion. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we'd like to acknowledge the minutes and reports from other departments. ZBA minutes for 3519. In 31919, Cultural Council minutes from 5619, and Grant Writer monthly report May 2019. Motion for that. You have a motion to acknowledge. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. For announcements tonight, the Brookfield Fire Battalion will be holding its annual Father's Day chicken barbecue on Sunday, June 16th. This is our big annual fundraiser. We have been doing it since 1950. <coughs> Tickets are available from department members are calling the station at 508-867-7306. For a $15 donation, you get a half a barbecue chicken, salad, dinner roll, baked potato, and an individual pie. Serving is from 12 noon until 1.30. All meals are packed to go but there will be limited seating at the station and if you want to eat there. Uh, Senator Gobi's aide will hold office hours in the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, June 5th. Do you have and anything to add? To that one, to the advisory board, uh, that Senator Lo uh, uh, Gobi's aide will be in this room tomorrow and that aid has been talking with DOT with respect to legal expenses the town has absorbed for different uh, land takings. And so we might have some interest as to his progress in convincing DOT that something that they thought was a little bit of money was a lot of money and that the town shouldn't have to pay for it. So we'll see where that ends. And also, thank you. Okay. And also tonight, um, I would like to thank uh, at the Memorial Day services, uh, we had um, two young ladies from the elementary school uh, did the um, Gettysburg address. One was at the uh, down at the cemetery, and the other one was at the Common. And Edith Simpson and Sarah Wexler, and then also Flanders Field. We had Corinne Kelly and Haley Powers. And then I would also like to thank the Boy Scouts who filled in at last minute to be color guides for us. And those are Corbin Gad Boys, Mason Oxman, Noah Aubin, and Donald Parks. And I want to thank them all for all their help. And it's nice to see the young, young people get involved in the community. And we're hoping this will be continued over the years. Our first thing on the agenda this evening is a M. VP listening session with Andrew Lowe. And as Andrew gets up, the other thing that happened it was the scouts were uh, in the room at the listening session earlier, so glad to have more at the second session. And didn't they, you know, Brian told me that they got some badge because of being. They, they, can, they can apply for yeah, they a can communications apply for a badge. badge. Yep. So good luck. Thank you. And am I loud enough for the camera here? Great, thank you. Okay, so uh, my name is Andrew Lowe, and I'm here from the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission, which is the state designated regional planning agency for Brookfield and 39 other communities in Worcester County. So here's another with my colleague, Ian McElwee, who's over here. Um, I would ask that folks that are in the audience uh, sign the signing sheet that's going around to stop and set this event is taking place. Um, and there are also a couple of handouts going around if you're interested in what we're talking about. So, um, as Linda mentioned, I'm here to talk about the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program in Brookfield. So, uh, this is the public listening session component. Uh, this is a state funded grant program that uh, the state came up with two years ago to help communities plan for adaptations to climate change and, and how climate change is impacting natural hazards. 
So uh, communities that complete this process become MVP certified communities and become eligible for uh, quite a substantial grant program called the MVP Action Grant Program, which is um, say has several tens of millions of dollars to fund over the next few years. Um, so it's a good opportunity. It also gives you bonus points on various other state grant programs like MassWorks. So the MVP program is based on community resilience building framework uh, that was developed by the Nature Conservancy and the National Earth Strategy and Spirit Administration a couple of years ago. Um, thus far, 71 other Massachusetts municipalities have completed this process, and about 80 more are doing it in the same round that Brookfield is. So uh, that's about 150 out of the 351 communities in the state thus far. So, uh, the goals of the MVP program are basically fourfold. So to define your extreme weather and, and uh, natural hazards that are impacted by climate change, uh, to identify existing and future vulnerabilities and strengths, to develop and prioritize actions for the community and broader stakeholders, um, and to identify opportunities for the community to advance those actions to help reduce risks and build resilience against natural hazards and climate change. So uh, one question that we do get in, in various communities where we've been doing this work is how does this impact the natural hazard mitigation plan, which communities have been doing for the last few decades? So uh, there is some overlap, certainly. Um, MVP, however, is a longer term program because it's looking at climate change in the future. Uh, natural hazard mitigation, uh, conversely, is a, it's a five year plan that looks retroactively at hazards that have already been happening. So <clears throat> Brookfield's plan, uh, hazard mitigation plan is completed last year, the company is completed last year. Um, and so that, it's a very regimented process, whereas MVP is, is more of a consensus building on where this building exercise than it is a, a detailed plan. And, um, so again, this is a community-driven process. It's been led by a, uh, a project coordinator who's here with us tonight, Catherine Baraka. Um, she's been leading a core team of town officials. That's included uh, Selectman Snyder, um, Chief Martell from the Fire Department, Don Taft from the Water Commission, and Ken Cleveland, who's also here from the Conservation Commission. Uh, that team met, I think it was five times uh, over the last uh, seven or eight months now. Um, the Central National Planning Commission was identified as the service provider. Uh, we've been certified by the state to do this kind of thing. Um, and the big piece of this project was the workshop. So it was an all-day event that was held in this room back in April 25. There were 11 different town officials and uh, related stakeholders here, aside from our group from the Planning Commission. Um, that was an invitation-only workshop, but tonight is a public listening session open to anyone, uh, which is uh, why some of you are here. So um, the first step in the uh, workshop process was to identify four the top four hazards in town that are being impacted by climate change. So, uh, the was here, flooding, <coughs> storms, slash drought, slash wildfire, and severe storms. I won't get into those in too much detail because I think we've got a lot of other things on the agenda tonight. Um, but, you know, flooding is any kind of flood. So, stormwater runoff, rivers, that's a big area. And as the climate changes, there's a lot of data showing that we're getting fewer rainstorms, but they're more intense and we're getting more precipitation overall as a result. Um, winter storms. So, you know, we used to get nice clean snowstorms and, you know, cold and the snow was still um, As the climate has been changing and as it's projected to change, we're getting more things like sleet and ice and mixed things that change from one to the other. In fact, again, the the storm, it's a much bigger mess that's harder for the highway park to deal with, harder for school bus transportation, or other school. That's another concern. Uh, heat is obviously part of the warming climate change, as I call it. And uh, it has direct impacts for sort of people who are working outside, uh, the very old or the very young can also be vulnerable. Um, but it, it also results in more traffic. So even though we're getting more precipitation overall, it's being spaced out differently. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting fairly regular smaller rain and snowstorms, we're getting much bigger ones that are longer periods apart. So um, that means that we're more susceptible to drought now, as I think we all remember from it. 16 is where it drives year to year. Years. Um, so that's an issue. And that also leads into wildfires. So as we get drier uh, weather for more time and more heat, and our forests are also being uh, damaged by things like invasive pests and uh, bigger windstorms, we just have more potential for wildfire than we want to. In the last one here, severe storms. That really is major wind events. That was uh, a 
address the flooding issues separately here. But that's uh, you know, severe thunderstorms, tropical storms, tornadoes, and that kind of thing. Um, so with taking those four hazards, um, the MVP program requires that each community look at the impacts of those hazards on three main topics. So infrastructure, society, and environment. Uh, infrastructure being things like you know, your water system, your drainage system, town buildings, your electrical grid. Um, society in this context can mean things more like, uh, you know, do you have demographic groups who are more vulnerable? Do you have neighborhoods that are more vulnerable? And also kind of overarching governmental issues. So your town bylaws, uh, town policies, that kind of thing. Um, and environment um, it kind of speaks for itself, but it's your, your wetlands, your natural resources, um, and uh, that sort of thing. Catch up on my notes here. Um, so at the workshop, the, the, the attendees split into two tables to have really an all-day discussion about this process. And um, during the course of the event, it, there were probably I don't know, 150 items that were discussed by the groups. It's a long stretch. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to get a few highlights here. So on the environmental side, um, some of the, the major issues identified were the Bob River, uh, invasive species, both aquatic and non-aquatic, so uh, gypsy moth, uh, milfoil, uh, a lot of species. Septic systems were an issue, um, because as I think most of us know here, there's no sewer system in Brookfield. And as the climate changes, that impacts the way septic systems function, because the water table is a little higher than once was. Um, and wetlands. So, Clarence mentioned that the previous version of this listening session earlier today, Brookfield is an awful high percentage of town that is either water or wetland. Um, so some of the strategies that the attendees at the workshop uh, developed to help address these issues were to complete a comprehensive plan to look at the water quality of the Quigley River and other water bodies. Um, they wanted to complete a, a study and a management plan about uh, invasive species, so there are things that can be done to address some of those. They wanted to increase the board of health inspections of septic systems to make sure they're all functioning as they were uh, permitted to do. Um, and they wanted to uh, look for more options to do uh, what's called low impact development in town. So that means um, you know, instead of just building drain pipes that take home water away, it could be things like you know, building a rain garden or, or putting in natural soils and things to kind of soak the water up and let it evaporate on its own rather than having to pay a lot of money to to take it away and, and dump it somewhere else. So um, this map, uh, seeing the hashing, it, it's, uh, I don't know if this will show up, but um, the hash mark areas, those are your FEMA designated flood zones. The green areas are your state designated wetlands. So as uh, Clarence had mentioned earlier, there are an awful lot of parts of town that are susceptible to flood. Um, so societal issues. The, the major issues identified were uh, one with the neighborhood. So the Quaybog Street and Pine Lane neighborhood is very low lying. I think it's experienced a pretty regular flooding yeah. over the years. Um, there was a public education and awareness issue that was brought up just to make sure that the community <coughs> is aware of these issues and can trying to be more prepared. And as part of that, the reverse 911 system that's already in place to perhaps be utilized more on this front to try to get the word out. And there was also an issue of the, the number of town-owned properties uh, and how hazards could affect them. So strategies that were uh, discussed um, on this, this front were to help evaluate your evacuation procedures and to develop a, a funding plan for these flood-prone neighborhoods. Um, also to develop more of an education and outreach program to help increase awareness of health climate hazards um, and mental hazards in general. And I think that was also, uh, you mentioned vulnerable populations here, a big part of that was to try to, to identify you know, not just locations, but people who would be born. So Brookfield has a high population of seniors. Um, and see, to, to that point, you've reminded me, and seniors living alone. Yes, many seniors living alone, mm -hmm. and, and many living in concentrated areas, too, within the mobile home parks, which I believe are, are 55 plus or <coughs> yeah. in, in that age range. Um, so again, uh, another strategy was to continue to support and maybe enhance the use of that reverse 911 program. And then uh, another one was to analyze your town home properties and structures. So you know, one thing could be to look at uh, are there opportunities to increase your water system um, using town property, and that's something I'll get to in one second. 
um, could have uh, increased sheltering, <coughs> mental health. You could also, I know there's an interest in a visitor center uh, to try to capitalize on the uh, Adena site and, and other <coughs> things in there. Um, again, this, this map is just kind of showing some of the same as the previous ones. So you've got your flood zones and the turquoise and the green, the different flood zones. But what uh, I wanted to highlight here was you can see these little red dots in um, Quebec Pond and South Pond, and those indicate homes that are in the FEMA designated flood zone, so they're more at risk. And these orange circles indicate areas um, where there are homes that have made repeated claims against their flood insurance. So this just illustrates the you know, concentrated neighborhood um, level uh, risk that some locations have. Um, so infrastructure. So the biggest one I think uh, that was discussed was the water system here in town. So I think folks are familiar that there is a municipal water system that's mostly in this part of town, so the northern part of town along the Route 9 corridor. Um, but anything south of the Playboy River does not have access to the municipal water. Another issue was municipal buildings um, and drainage and culverts was another big one that was uh, discussed. Um, you know, as we get these bigger precipitation events, the 100, 120 year old culverts that might be this big, you know, they probably need to be this big and in a different form um, than they would have been in the past to accommodate the storms that we're getting now, um, as well as to minimize the ecological impact of the, the culverts. Um, the elementary school was another um, item that was addressed as infrastructure. So, strategies for this one include uh, complete an engineering analysis of the water system and potentially look at are there opportunities, is there a need to expand the water system coverage to the southern part of town? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, also, the, uh, the group wanted to look at installing backup generators at more of the town facilities, including uh, this building and the fire department. Um, another piece was to make sure all the town buildings are ADA accessible because some of them may be utilized for shelters in the event of a natural hazard, a natural disaster. Um, the group wanted to complete an engineering inventory of all the storm drains and culverts in town. So again, a lot of them are undersized, they may be in poor condition in some cases, so um, they wanted to do an inventory analysis to, to see which ones need to be replaced. And last, uh, the school, like uh, many of the other town buildings, could use a backup generator because it is your designated emergency shelter, but it doesn't have all of the equipment that uh, is generally preferred for, for and this will be hard to see, I think, but these light blue lines kind of up in this area, these are your main <coughs> network, so it's really just in this area north of the Quaybaugh River, which is right here. Your drinking water comes from a well field here in this brook field. Um, and then everybody else down here is on private wells, except for these orange areas, which are the, the well fields of the three mobile home parks. Um, so, uh, as part of this process, um, the town requested actually extra grant funding and was awarded extra grant funding from the state to do a survey of everybody who's uh, settled up the Quaybaugh River to try to get into, you know, is there really a need, is there a desire of folks in that part of town to connect to town water? Because there were a lot of calls from that part of town, I guess, uh, during the 2016 drought, for people with their wells running dry or, or kind of discolored or, or not usable with low pressure. Um, and um, I guess that, that has happened in previous drugs as well. So uh, we worked with the Water Commission and the Water Department to develop a survey. You see a little screenshot of it here. It had 24 questions. It went out to everybody, uh, all businesses and all homes south of the river in the December issue of the Brookfield Citizen. Um, and the results, you know, 24 questions, I'm not gonna get into the results of all the questions, but just as a quick summary of the results, we had 61 responses. Um, of respondents, everybody was a property owner. I think in that part of town, it's outside of the mobile home parks, it's mostly ownership. Again, with 93% um, of folks have a private well, uh, so the remainder of the respondents either were sharing a well with one or two neighbors or a, a handful were mobile home residents. Uh, iron was commonly uh, called out as a as water chemistry issue, so about 39% of folks had issues with iron in the water. A uh, percentage for 15% had maintenance issues. But about 40% of people with their wells are very satisfied with their well water. <coughs> and about another 30% or so were, were quite satisfied. And most of the rest were moderately satisfied. So for the most part, people were really <coughs> satisfied with their well water. 54% um, of folks have backup generators, which is important because if you're on a well and your electricity goes out, then your water goes up with it. So that's an important 
um, resilience factor in that part of town. So 80% of the wells were installed more than 10 years ago. About almost 60% have not been maintained in the last five years. And getting into kind of the, the big results here, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. So one third of respondents just have no interest in connecting to town water at all. And then one third are very interested in connecting to town water, no matter what the conditions are. And then there were a bunch of people who were somewhere in between those ranges. It was fairly split right down there. Um, but in terms of the expense, most people were willing to, to pay only $30 or less, and that's both for water service, I should say that's a monthly rate, both for service and for any battery costs needed to install water in that part of the town. So that, you know, that may be an issue there where it's probably not a high enough monthly rate to pay for making that level of improvement. But um, there are more densely populated parts of the southern part of town where it might be uh, doable um, on a relatively poor basis. So that's the water survey. Um, so the next steps here, the, there's a final report documenting the results of the workshop that will go into the state at the end, by the end of the month. And Ian has uh, pretty well uh, drafted that one up. And that will be available on CMRPC's website by the end of the week. And I think uh, we could probably have uh, the town put a link on your website as well. So we will be uh, getting that open for public comments for a, a period of time before it has to go to the state. Um, once that goes into the state, it will be designated an MVP community. There's an annual report that you have to complete uh, to maintain that status. Uh, the next round of MVP action grants are supposedly available late in the summer. Um, the state's typically been a little slow on their timeline, so let's, let's call it sometime late this year. Um, so you will be eligible to, to apply for funding in that round. I have a couple of links here, um, with a little more information about the program. And that's what we have. I'm happy to take questions from the board and the audience. Whatever you prefer. So the good news is more grant money available. Yes. Uh, back to the town's uh, projects with respect to infrastructure drainage and the like uh, we identified a year ago two major areas molasses hill road and rice corner slash gay road as far as areas that needed to be concerned we needed to consider drainage and the like we were not a lot we were not awarded the grant last year their recommendation to us was that we had just too much in the bucket with both of the projects listed they asked us to split it cindy the highway department uh, has taken that grant. It'll be a strap grant. It will be focused on Rice Corner Gay um, so that we can see what we can do to improve drainage. And when, when we talk, we have uh, two culverts in that si system that uh, uh, are definitely undersized. In fact, we had uh, ecological restoration <coughs> up about a month ago now where we uh, visited the Rice Corner Cross culvert. And if you ever have an opportunity to go visit that, Culver, you ought to, uh, but uh, we, once we were able to get that grant, that, that culvert will be increased substantially because of the amount of water runoff. Um, what this does, what Andrew's program does for us is now look to that next pot of money so that we can not apply to the strap but to this MVP money to go after Molasses Hill as a, as a secondary project. So it, very key to, to have this uh, designation so that we can move forward with the infrastructure projects that are needed. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Grant money. Um, I'm one of the people who got that survey said not interested in the town water, right? But I am interested in you drilling my well at 400 feet. Um, what would it take to do that? And wouldn't that even be less money than trying to put in an entire water system throughout the town? offer people the ability to I have a 35 foot well that's where all my art's coming from and that's why it's dried up. Yeah. And we did find I think it was like 13 percent of people had wells less than 50 feet so you're not the only person with a shallow well. Um, I believe that. The yeah. solution is a deeper well. And that could easily work for you. Great. Seven thousand. How do I apply for this grant? So this grant is not available to individuals. This is a grant solely for municipalities. Um, there may be other programs out there uh, for that have researched it for individual owners. Um, that, if your second question is, is wouldn't that be cheaper? That I think is something that we would need a civil engineer 
to do a more quantitative analysis of what we've done here is basically preliminary is just try to identify what the issues are and look at ballpark scale of what the issue is. So if you wanted to price that out as a community, um, you know, it would, we would need some reinforcements on the technical side to do that detailed analysis. But, but what it does is that because of the survey, and it wasn't well attended, but it decent to give us direction. The reality is that there are a bunch of folks, and we've identified a bunch of folks just like you, and what we'd have to do is to understand who they are, where they are, and to see whether or not the seven or $8,000 for that one well or uh, bunching together to be able to have a shared service. Again, that was one of the things that you were thinking about. Our, our focus wa was to the trailer parks and helping them, but the reality is there could be other pockets through the southern side of town that have shallow wells that did experience sure. drought that maybe there's something that can be done. But again, now we have access to money where we can go study it and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why you're here. That's why we're here. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Andrew. You. Thank you, Andrew. You guys want a minute to close down? Uh, yeah. Oh, I can do the next one. Yeah. Okay. The next one we're going to do is the at scenic road hearing, and Mr. Snyder will explain that. This was a, uh, a space saver for whether or not there needed to be a scenic road hearing, and I suggested that we leave it on the agenda for the simple reason to make sure everyone's aware that in fact the fisheries and wildlife are looking at two projects up on Long Hill Road, the Sa uh, Salmon River or Salmon Brook um, Wildlife Management Area. They're looking to return it to a state of 1923 where it was fields, not woods, so that the, one of the things we've learned in the process is that the, uh, Brookfield is a place where all upland birds that are identified that nest in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts nest in Brookfield. I, I, hopefully I said that correctly. <laughs> that, that all the species are represented. That's probably a better way to say that. And so with this, what they want to do is they want to bring that, the, that upland bird community up into the Salmon Brook area. And so to do that, they want to put it back as fields as it was. And so the concern was with the scenic road is that if from the stone wall to the road is town property and part of the scenic road program and to cut on that uh, to cut in that space you need a hearing to approve it with the exception of hazard trees so what the state has uh, obviously done is decided that the the healthy trees on the roadside will remain and only the hazard trees, and there were three that were identified, would, would come down as a part of this. But I think it's important to understand, not only is there going to be a, a, a major project in this wildlife area, that beside it, in a, in a year, over a five-year program, to the west of that area will be a major force operation to cull out the dead and dying uh, so that we can really have a, have a better forest for, again, birds and, and others. So, again, the state is looking to spend a bunch of money up there. We uh, welcome it. Thank this you. This is a done deal? Exactly. Yeah, it's their money, their donut on their property. So. That's good. And its primary reason is to <laughs> develop the, the sanctuary or get yeah. rid of old trees? And dead get trees. rid of old trees. Yeah, just because of the gypsy moss, the, the amount of de right. dead and dying oh, yeah. and this time. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that you as an advisory board have got to make sure you consider as you, you do your deliberations is that uh, we've, we've averaged about 90 trees a year that we're taking down on town property. That There's 200, 200 plus on the list, and I, I just knowing my property, I know what we're, we're going to be facing as far as taking down dead oaks over the next few years. So it's going to be an expense to the town as far as town-owned properties and oak trees. So I'm, I'm yeah. glad, again, and, and what Andrew talked about is the dead and dying oaks up in that area left to be there are a fire hazard. So it's good that we're getting into it. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, thank you. It would be nice to see it come back to the yeah. sanctuary because years ago, before um, the Audubon bought Elm Hill Farm, 
uh, every every spring, um, the gentleman that owns the bird um, store down there in Sturbridge, he used to come up and he used to, um, they charge a small fee and we, could all, we used to go out in the fields and look for the different birds and bring the binoculars and uh, he'd tell us all the different bird calls. And it's not allowed anymore, but it's a nice thing to look forward to. Yeah. Next on the list. Next on the list is sign the snow guide proposal. A motion to sign the snow proposal. Okay. I'll second that. And I'll say aye. All in favor? Aye. aye. Speaking of hazards. Next one is to sign a DEP letter of authorization. Motion to sign. Uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Cindy's already signed this. Right. One here to be, we have another one uh, to be signed is the better agreement amendment. And this relates to the, yes. pro the Finney project? Yeah, the Finney project. And what this allows Beta to do for us, for the town, is to in fact file the proper paperwork with EPA and DEP. Just to that, Andrew is looking into several approaches for grant funding <coughs> to accomplish this, either through mass development or actually CBG, CDPG money that might be available. Oh, that's good. Okay, and the next one is to sign the Clark and Green contra contract amendment. I don't know that. Okay, one. this one also it's um it has something to do with the. Uh, Physical improvements with the water department. Oh, oh, okay. Motion to sign. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next one is a vacation carryover, and that is from uh, Cindy Thompson. She has eight days that she'd like to carry over. Motion to approve. Uh, I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we want to do, do we have anything under other? Can just see um, communication. Oh, yeah. Yes, from yeah. Why don't we do, why don't we move on to those and finish? The correspondence, yep. and that, and then we'll get on with the advisory. Good point. Uh, th yeah, this this is one that um, needed to be signed for the licensing okay. for the yeah. application. Yep. Do we have any other? Andrew, what happened? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. okay. Then we have here. Um, under car correspondence, we have Charter Communications has some more upcoming changes. Um, Charter, locally known as Spectrum, is making customers aware on or around May 24th that Olympa pa passed, or whatever, I don't know, will cease transmission of its Hillsong channel located on the basic uh, and the standard tier. And then we have something here also from um, New Braintree Historical Commission. It says, Dear Board Members, the Historical Commission would like to invite you and your Historical Commission to attend a gravestone preservation program by Tamara Cont Condi of the Historic Grave Services on Tuesday, the 18th of June at 7 p.m. at the New Braintree Town Hall, 20 Memorial Drive. 
It says, every town has a cemetery which holds the names of the founding families and history of the community as it is developed. And it says uh, to get in touch with uh, Deb Morrison at 508-867-3324 if anybody is interested in attending. All right. Where was this? Wasn't the one about the uh, utility truck? That was on the answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you want to say something about what on the other side of the other. I, I sent it via email. I figured we'd take care of it that way. But if you have a question, mm -hmm. it's, I think there is. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I don't think you have to be told fan. But. Okay. Back here, um, when we discussed acquiring the uh, utility truck. Yes. Uh, oh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. We should talk about that. Yeah, this. we should probably. Uh, well, the town recently uh, required a, a utility truck that has been gone through me mechanically and insured and registered. It was, um, where did they get it? Palmer. Up in, it came from the town of Palmer. So different board members will be able to use this. And like um, the assessors will have keys. And, they'll ma and he's going to maintain a request for the uh, different uses from different departments. And the one thing that I was concerned about, I feel that um, the selectmen should have a uh, set of keys to that also. In the office. In the to, office. No, no, in the office, I think, because we have alternate keys in the boxes, and I feel that we should also have a key. Sure. So it's so the fire department will have a set of keys for emergency or non-emergency situations. And then also, uh, there was something here about how the, um, the fire department will handle a maintenance. So he has extra money in his budget that he'll be able to maintain this vehicle. Yeah. It's okay. primarily for, for uh, the assessor's office. Yeah, the assessor's office, and if anybody else needs it for any kind of a use. But that was the only thing I was just wanted to say. I just think that the And he's got a be. procedure in place, and that's good. Yeah, there should be a key left in the assessor's office. Oh, well, make an extra set of keys yeah. the box. for the box. Okay, our next one is we are going to meet with the uh, joint meeting with the advisory board. Come on down, guys. Excellent. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Your table back to where it was. Okay, we'll resume our meeting. Uh, we're going to go over the first thing. Do we want to go over the annual budget recommendations or do we want to go over the articles that have money and what we're going to use for money for those? Okay, so we're going to start. The only one that, only ones here probably in, are the money articles, and where the money will probably come from. Yeah. Okay. The first, the first one would be the uh, article one. That's the deficit for the snow and ice. We could probably take that out of stabilization. Well, and that, you might have seen a summary. Maybe I should start there. So we did the budget which you all received. And then I did a, a, a sum, which you... Is that when you went up to... Is that the one when you went to see Deb Wagner? Correct. Okay. So I met Deb Wagner. Uh, she and I went through <coughs> the entire budget together and then all the articles and reviewed revenue and how to fund certain things. Now, if you look at the left side of this 
documents. I don't have a good that's fine. I didn't bring it. Oh. You have it's, one oh. There? it's in oh. there. It's in there. Yeah. It's in the packet. All right, got it. Okay. If you look at the left side, it says budgeted expenditures. So this is where you have the, yeah. you know, the town budget. Uh, and then the various articles. <coughs> and then the very, you know, so, so the first group of articles are snow and ice plow, private roads, road construction, those articles, the number of the articles and the amount. And then the funding source. And for the purposes of this example, I used the stabilization as funding everything. Mm -hmm. That is not a, necessarily a, a uh, advisory recommendation. That is just, you know, as, as uh, that Wagner and I put this together, this is how we did it, okay? Uh, below that you see uh, ATM article warrants and then uh, uh, um, uh, other available funding. And that's where the ambulance is, you know, from Comstar, all the, all the money's coming from Comstar. Yeah. So total appropriations, you add that column up and you have $9.4 million, $9,440,000, $125. And then you look to the left side and you see budgeted revenues. And this is where you have the 2009 levy limit and total new growth, oh, excuse me, the, the, the increase of 2.5% on the levy limit plus new growth. That's a five year average. Uh, a calculation of the correct calculation of the uh, levy ceiling and then the levy limit 2020 plus debt exclusion which is the police station minus the uh, Tantasco Regional School District mm -hmm. uh, uh, reimbursement. And so that was added. So your total maximum allowed limit limit is uh, $5,748,294. You know, the cherry mm -hmm. sheet revenue at, at 2.5. Local estimate receipts um, at 952,000. That's a five year average. Um, the funding for the um, ambulance is going to come from Comstar, and then, and then of course your revenue sources for your for all the articles are, in, in, for this example will be uh, um, stabilization. And so um, your total revenues is nine 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 million eight hundred twenty four thousand five hundred fifty dollars amount to be raised. We need we need nine point four million. Um, uh, the the four four million dollars there four million seven six thousand five hundred two hundred fifty six dollars is the is the amounts coming from um, stabilization, Comstar, uh, you know, local estimate receipts, and then cherry sheet revenue. That's that's where that number comes from, and so. The difference between the total revenues and the receipts from other sources is five five million three hundred sixty three thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars. That's that's the amount that needs to be raised through taxation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's a quick estimated tax rate right there. And as you can see, the bottom lines here: stabilization account. We're starting with six hundred sixty-eight thousand three hundred twenty-eight dollars. I received that from town treasurer. And um, and if we were to fund all the articles as identified above that, uh, it would leave us with five hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred sixty-nine dollars. And so, that's that's a a snapshot of what what we've got as we make decisions as to how to fund the articles, of course, that, that, that taxation line can change. Mm. If, we're, if, we're, if we're choosing to raise an appropriate, you know, for instance, uh, you know, Sawmill Pond, any of the above, okay, that would move into um, a different column. Yes, okay? I understand So, that. with that being said, then, you know, we're, we're ready to talk about how to fund the articles. Mm. Any questions as far as this document goes? Oh, that was quite good. That's quite quite good. The only thing, though, I think the two thousand dollars for the street lights that's on by a petition, so okay. we don't even know if that is even going to pass. Agreed. That one. This is a snapshot of what. Snapshot. Oh, I understand. It's it's put together very well. Uh, I appreciate you going up and seeing Deb Wagner and doing this. 
It was uh, one of the most beneficial things I've yeah. done so far. So I, I, she was excellent, by the way. Personally, I f um, the way I feel, we should just take these, instead of doing appropriations, we should just take these few articles right here out of stabilization. And hopefully in the fall we have free cash, we can put the money back into stabilization. As we did last year. Yeah, as we did last year. Unless there's some burning mm -hmm. article that needs to come in a different direction. I don't see anything that we no, I'm, just, I'm, oh. I'm asking yeah, Steve. Uh, I, I, I won't. Um, we have, as a committee, have gone through the articles, and, and most, I believe all the spending articles we support. Okay. Um, we have questions on street lights and things like that. But um, um, uh, and then uh, perhaps the library rent was, was, so I think it's worth talking about a couple of these articles, you know, at, amongst us at this point. So as far as um, snow and ice um, advisory, uh, $36,358. We we're typically taking that from um, free cash. Uh, we were, I, I believe we, we were in, 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 in and say it would be, uh, we would recommend that be taken out of um, stabilization. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. okay. So we were, we were all together on that one. Um, and then we're, we went, we're together on that also. Yeah. yeah. So snow and ice was, was a stabilization. Private roads with stabilization. Uh, road construction and reconstruction. And um, I believe we, we had agreed to do that out of, um, well, let's just, let's just discuss this. Was there, do, do we agree to take that out of stabilization, yes or no, and is there a motion here? I think we approved it. I'm just, I'm just yeah. cracking my brain. Yes. And I think this was two weeks ago. It was. Yeah, These are all approved. These it's just a matter of two weeks ago. Yeah. how we're going to approve it. Are you line up still? I remember we approved the motions if they, if the, if the, if the warrant, if the warrant articles didn't specify how we paid, I don't think we specified anything in our approval. Well, and that's how I think we left it, is that we wanted to understand yes. what the stabilization amount was yeah. so that we made sure we had headroom. Yes. The answer is we have headroom, so as we did last year, just do it and then we can clean it up in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If anyone think, remembers differently, I think you're absolutely right. We didn't know how to fund it. We just agreed to them. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, very well. Are, are, are we ready to you know, make a motion then to just fund these? This way? Is this what you're looking to do at this point? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, as a committee, um, I would, do I hear a motion to fund all the spending articles, articles number one, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, and 18, totaling $119,859, assuming there's no changes, uh, through stabilization. Do I hear a motion? Excuse me, Steve, what did you say the bottom number was? I have it as $119,000. Okay. 859. Okay. I thought I heard something different. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, do we want to do else? I don't think we. Hmm? Do you want to? I, I don't see why. No. We approved it anyway. We, we approved it anyway. Yeah, we it's approved just, it anyway. Yeah, so it was just that one question of making sure we had headroom. Mm, we have yeah, headroom. We have the headroom. Okay. Yep. okay. So there's, your, there's, a, there's an accurate snapshot there. And, I'm, okay. and I've got this formula ready to go. If anything moves to taxation, we're going okay. to do Excellent. Okay. All right. So from an articles thing, the only thing that's left is Sharon's, right? Yeah. Is that what we have? We have the, the final ones from uh, town council. If you want to look it over, I did plug them in here. 
Uh, we're waiting for the recommendations by the advisory board for that because we, that's what you email to us sometime this afternoon, correct? It's, it's the most recent email we have from you regarding the article, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I believe I emailed it as soon as it came in. I think it was yesterday. But the most recent copy of this warrant, I emailed you again this afternoon because there was just a one-word change in Article 1. But the uh, the two planning board articles are the same. Those are the lawyers are all set with everything. Yes, just waiting for it. Yeah, it went to the front chair and sent it back to me. I sent it to them. So we're good to go, right? Sharon, you're good to go? Sharon's good to go? Yeah. Motion to support the planning board's recommendation. We've we already voted to support the, we're just waiting If we've got it, we're done. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we're done. All right. Yeah. Um, we have not seen it as a This is the first we've seen it as a group, okay? Uh, we have our committee meeting Thursday night. Okay. And so I, I, would, um, I know I haven't read the whole thing. Has any, any has has everyone had a chance to read the articles? Is it twenty and twenty one? Twenty five, twenty six. Now it's twenty six and twenty seven. I think. Yeah, twenty six. Oh, sorry. Right, most of them. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Twenty six and twenty seven. Yeah, yeah there's a lot to them. Right. I was waiting for the attorneys. If the attorneys had some problem with the right. so I, I, I read the first drafts. Yeah. I didn't yeah. read. Right. I didn't read no. the final draft. Michelle didn't have it. I don't know. What, I, it's so long that I didn't get a chance to check all the changes. Did you notice, Sharon? Mm -hmm. If there were any changes in this last draft? Just come up and answer questions in general. Okay. okay. A little more. Questions? In general or specific? I will say that um, town council's um, issues with this, there were main, maybe two or three for each of the two. Um, warrant articles, and they mainly concerned either inherent contradictions between the chart, the um, use regulation chart, and some of the wording, and we clarified that, and or um, recommended changes in wording that came about according to town council because the state laws have changed. Like for example, there's a, a group that's designated in the first draft that no longer exists, so the town council recommended that we change the wording to reflect the new group that's in charge, that we, the names escaped at the moment, so that the warrant article would be correct with regard to the current status of how um, marijuana is regulated. They were, <laughs> that's correct, the Cannabis Control Commission. The solar one, I think there were two recommendations, and they had to do with the beginning of the warrant article, um, the introduction to it. And just it was clarification language did not change. I, I should point out, neither of these changed the inherent purpose of these warrant articles. They were either housekeeping, one typo, or the changes I just described. Um. There is a map that goes with this. Um, I did send, uh, Steve tells me I did send it to him, and he's very, very busy with this, um, and uh, I'm glad he reminded me. But I can send it to anyone who would like a copy, um, an electronic copy. And the one thing I will, the one thing I will point out is that this map is identical in every way to the medical marijuana overlay district map. We have not changed the boundaries of that map at all. We are redesignating it for both medical and adult use marijuana. So the areas covered in this overlay district are identical. The one change that is different is that if you were at the last um, town meeting where the medical marijuana bylaw was enacted, and I believe it was 2012, I think, um, there was an amendment from the floor that changed the buffer zone, which I believe is found on page three. It shows a dotted line on the field and the elementary school. Um, 
The buffer zone that was originally put before the town was 500 feet, linear feet from any establishment that had to do with children's schools, churches, Lewis Field, etc. Um, this was a recommended linear buffer zone recommended by the state at the time for medical marijuana facilities. There was a vote from the floor to amend the medical marijuana bylaw to increase that distance to 2,500 square, uh, 2,500 feet rather than 500 feet. In other words, a five-fold increase in the buffer zone. And the concern mentioned was the safety of children. I pointed out at the time that increasing this buffer zone to effectively what amounted to a half a mile would effectively eliminate one of the two sections of the buffer zone and reduce the third to a fraction of the area that was put forth in the bylaw. However, the town did vote to enact this enlarged buffer zone. I remember that. I did not expect it to pass muster with the Attorney General because of the severe intrusion into the original overlay district, but apparently it did pass muster. I should point out that town council informed me that the Attorney General will probably look very carefully, more carefully, at adult use marijuana overlay districts. So if a similar um, type of amendment increasing the buffer zone is put forward and enacted by the town, there is at least a 50-50 chance that the Attorney General will not approve it because it would have the net effect of severely, severely restricting the overlay district to a point where it is meaningless. But we'll see what happens on the town floor. Right now it's 500, square, 500 feet, and that is a distance, again, recommended by the state. Um, and we included it, and the argument we're going to give to the town floor is that we included it to ward off any concerns about the effect of marijuana establishments in um, groups and uh, establishments that, you know, cater to children. It's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> So, um, so the 2,500 linear feet that is currently on the books would be changed? Or yes, would, and the change okay. is outlined in the text of the okay. Bible. Yep. Um, but the boundaries... What does all this mean, this? I mean, what, what, where, where can anything happen? Okay, Bobby, can I see your copy? Okay. Page one, this first map shows the tax maps from the assessor's office as they currently exist, minus the overlay district. If you look at the bottom, there's a legend in color showing the, de the different districts in the town. Uh, district B is the village district. District BB is business B. And as you can see, um, there are only really two of those in, in this map. Just the, uh, the, the light tan is district business A. And District FP, the kind of the sickening and green color, is the floodplain. Um, rural residential is white. The overlay district is found on the second map, and that is a portion that is cross hatched in red, and it is in two sections. In drawing up this overlay district originally for the medical marijuana bylaw, we wanted to avoid a density of population that would not only make it impractical, but um, probably would not pass town muster. But these two sections of the overlay district are, are located on main roads, Route 9 and um, South Maple Street. They're in districts that are not as densely populated, but yet are close enough to town to attract possible businesses that may be interested in either building or buying the property or building it within those districts or using existing buildings, and there are a few there. The third, uh, the third map here, the one that's labeled MOV in two sections, is the westernmost section of the overlay district on either side of Route 9, showing the property lines as the various properties that are involved. They're primarily in business A. Um, and are bordered by village and um, I believe, yes, floodplain. This map also shows the effect of the buffer zone relative to Lewis Field and the elementary school down here. Um, the buffer zone does, does intrude 
slightly on the northernmost overlay district, just on one corner, and a slightly larger section on the southernmost part of that westernmost overlay district. If you go to the next page, it shows the easternmost, the third section of that overlay district on South Maple. And as you can see, it almost entirely falls within one or two properties. And those properties are zone business A and business B. Does that make things any clearer? Just, just one question. Sure. Uh, on the first one you mentioned with the two, where, yes. where is Cumberland Farms in this place? Like, is there a lower part of the? No, that um, that section is um, it's west of I believe it's west of. It's off the range of the map. Mill on that. No. Okay. Yeah, because they'd be more in the puffers on that because of the school. Right. Hmm. <clears throat> Cumberland would probably. Cumberland would probably be more in the uh, buffer zone district because it's by the school. Right, that's correct. Yeah. Cummings is, is practically yeah. right next to the school, and we avoided that area altogether. Yeah. And, and buffer zone, uh, the, this, this one, right over here? Yes. What's, um, is this where, like, that solar field is? Where is this? Victory Road is Okay, Victory Road is the road leading through the solar field that is opposite the right. plant box. Okay. Yep. At the time this map was drawn up, there was no solar field there. Right. If the property owners wanted to take out the solar field and put in a marijuana business, they would still be able to do it if this map passes again. Or if they wanted to reserve a corner of the property, or if the property owners on either side wanted to do this, they would be able, they would be able to do it. Who owns all this now? Is this the solar field who owns all that? Um, the, line, the property lines of this map are drawn from a previous subdivision map that was drawn up some time ago, which has not yet been updated on the tax maps. Those property lines have been eliminated. The property is now one big, one big piece, I believe, um, on either side of Victory Road. So those individual small lots don't exist anymore. Right. But this was the latest map we had to work with, so we went with one of them. That's fine. But in other words, right now it's one one piece of property, and it's owned by the people who own the solar farm. Yes. There are, um, with the exception of the easternmost property, the, the, the street designations on this map are enclosed in circles near the, the main street. So in other words, um, there, for example, there's a, a large piece of property that on the easternmost side here that does not belong to the owners of the solar farm. It is the property next door. Um, and I believe, I can't really read this because the, uh, I don't have my good glasses on, but. Which section, Sherry, are you talking about? On this section of the map? Down here on the bottom? Yes. Because no, the, the overlay district is within the red line. That's the overlay. It's laid over the current yeah. okay. districts. Yeah, because that's South Maple. Mm -hmm. And sure. yes, I'm look, looking at um, this map, the yes. Western Overlay District. It looks to me like I don't see a buffer zone around drawn here around um, Brookfield Elementary. Is, is it not shown simply because? The buffer zone around Brookfield Elementary does not impact the overlay district on the western side of town. Um, I, if I get the gist of your question, the the elementary school, if this map were extended, the elementary school would be over here, so right. it's not even close right. to. Okay, so it's like, but there's we, no buffer zone drawn around it simply because there's no overlay district near it to encroach upon the buffer zone. So why draw it if it's really if no one's going to be more worried about that line because you can't build. It. Just outside the buffer zone, anyway. That's correct. Okay. The reason we included this buffer zone is because 
It's close to these overlay mm -hmm. districts, and it does impact them. Yes. Um, a technical question. Sure. For lots that have the buffer zone boundary passed through them, are they, cons are they considered to be outside the buffer zone and therefore eligible for a marijuana business? Or if the buffer zone passes through the lot, is the requirement such that then they are now not eligible because the buffer zone passes through their lot? I guess it's just a few questions, and I'll repeat it back to you in, in, in other language. Um, you're asking if. If a buffer zone is on a property, does it apply to the whole property is what you're saying, right? That's another way to ask the question, yes. Right, okay. Um, the answer is no. The buffer zone is the buffer zone. If somebody, for example, who owned this piece of property, assuming it was one piece, mm -hmm. wanted to build a marijuana business, they could, as long as it fell outside of the as, five minutes. As long as they cite all of the relevant operations outside of the zone, yes. they can do it on their property. They just can't do it on the part of the property that is inside of the buffer zone. That is correct. Okay, thank you. That's uh, that's helpful to understand, and that's why it's drawn this way. Um, <clears throat> if I'm over here, wherever that is, <laughs> outside of the buffer zones or anything else, and I want to do a marijuana business, can I? The answer is no. Because it would be restricted to the overlay district only. It's well beyond any school or anything else. Yes. Oh, you mean the, the rest of town? The rest of town. Right. My house. My house, too. Okay. okay. And the answer is no, because it's not in the public. Just overlay. That's correct. I, I believe the intent was to have the over since these are commercial and I guess could be technically considered light industrial uses, the intent was to keep the overlay district in compatible zoning areas like business A. That's and exactly therefore, right. And these businesses, these, since these are businesses, they're not compatible with a residential zoning designation like where you live. That's exactly right. What about right. farming area? Marijuana farming is not considered an agricultural use. So Good. it does not fall under agricultural allowances. And that's a state decision, not ours. If you, if you look at the bylaw, it requires that any growing operation be done entirely indoors. I did. You would have you would have to put a building up. If you know about the Charlton proposal, Valley Green Grow, yep. and they're proposing building massive, massive in, uh, structures to to entirely contain the farm with ventilation and the accompanying air conditioning noise with um, you know, the traffic that's involved and so forth. It's not as simple as just planting a crop and watching it grow. It has to, they have to alarm systems and so forth. In, in other words, it has to happen indoors, which means huge buildings depending on the scale of the operation. Mm -hmm. yeah. My so, understanding is the need for buildings is, is a result of all the security requirements on the product that they're growing there. That is, is correct. That, it's much harder to defend an open field. That's right. I'm not in charge, but I'm yes. happy to answer it. That's okay, Deputy. <coughs> Sir, could you state your name just so I, I think we could get it earlier when we saw Richard Lowe. Richard Lowe, yes. Well, the proposed zoning for Richard Lowe is the Richard Lowe Tried to balance as with everything planning board does the 
the interests of private property owners with the general well-being and land use, the good of land use for the town. And that was where we were coming from with this. So the only way to have that change is to go to a town meeting and see if they can amend it? At this point, I believe so, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And there would be a raft of <coughs> questions that would have to be answered if that was the case, because when you're talking about maps and land use, it's not enough just to simply say rural residential, because you've got issues with floodplain, you've got issues with um, you would have to you would have to have um, hearings, I believe, mm -hmm. if you were going to change this to that extent. You could not change the essential nature of the bylaw. You could propose amendments, but if they radically or even substantially change the nature of the proposed bylaw, they would not be allowed from the floor. The one that expanded the buffer zone was different because it did not change the nature of the medical marijuana bylaw. It simply expanded the buffer zone and left everything else the way it was, which is why that amendment was allowed. As far as what amendments are allowed, town council will be available to give their opinion on whether any, any uh, amendments from the floor would involve a substantial change in the bylaw. And again, the reason for this is because any zoning bylaw changes have to be subject to a public hearing if they involve a substantial change. I hope that's not too confusing. Well, it's, it's not that confusing. I mean, I'm aware of all the laws, the security, and everything you have to do to one of these facilities. Mm -hmm. And it's not to increase anything that's going on now and to contain it inside my space that I'm already using to grow flowers. I understand that, but again, we had to balance the common good of the town with the interests of private property owners. And we decided that since this map had already been approved by the town, albeit with the increase of the buffer zone, that the path of least resistance would be to go with the same map. And that's where we were coming from on this. We did have a public hearing on the 20th Fortunately, nobody came. We also had two previous listening sessions where people could give input such as the input you're giving. Nobody came to those. And the reason that we had three meetings rather than just the state required one was because we wanted to hear from people like you about how we should write these bylaws. Without that type of input, we had to go with our best guess as to what would be, or our best, um, uh, the word, you know the word I'm looking for. Our, our best opinion of what was good for the town, based on previous, the previous bylaw, based on what we knew about state lines, um, based on what we knew about controversy in other towns, based on ongoing projects in the town, like open space uh, and recreational facilities, and um, the people wanting to put trails in, and the work that's being done in fisheries and wildlife. It, you know, you're dealing with a patchwork quilt, even in the best circumstances of uses, that all have to be balanced against each other. If we heard from private property owners such as yourself, we might have been able to come up with something that would satisfy the people who gave that concern. But we did not hear from anybody. So we had to go with, you know, what we knew. Well, we weren't aware. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it was posted somewhere, but we weren't aware of any meetings about it. They were, well, I don't know if you have Facebook. We did put them on Facebook. They were posted according to all of, all of the legal requirements that the state allows. And uh, whenever I had the opportunity, I would talk it up. But it's very difficult to get people to come to meetings here unless they have something personal at stake. <coughs> so, and, uh, you know, I regret that, but we did make the effort. And uh, Sharon? Yes. I mean, if the, on these, uh, just for scenario, if we're doing a scenario, if this is approved on the floor, there is still a process for people to say, we would like to amend the zoning bylaws. We think that there that this use, marijuana related, would be appropriate on this type of property. And the law can be amended in the future. This is not being set. It's, this is being set, but it is there is a process to amend it based on new information coming, more different interests being presented. Zoning bylaws are always subject to amendment. This but, I, but, I mean, but I mean modification at a future time. That's yes, correct. Yes, I mean, obviously this is subject to amendment on the floor as long as it's Doesn't not, as, as long as the scope is narrow enough. But 
but I'm saying that if this is approved, it, it sounds like there's some interest in the town for a, I'm going to guess, a growing operation on your part. Mm -hmm. And so, and and I know I know where you're located. I live near you. So it's like, so it's like, and your property is not in that. But my point is that 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 could be changed based on uh, the, the normal process of making changes to the zoning laws. I know that um, last year we had the, the moratorium, Sharon's uh, opinion, uh, Sharon's I concerned was that without a zoning law, <coughs> it's like people can come in and just apply. And so her concern is that the town should have a zoning, law, a zoning rules in effect in order to control what people can do. And it sounds like that you're on the outside looking in of that rule. But that doesn't mean that can't be changed. It's like, because I would be, I would be concerned, I mean, with you near me, uh, it's like I would be concerned with the impact of that type of operation on that part of town. And I would like, and, so, and I think that was why the planning board made their decision to say any grown operations have so. to be in the overlay district, which is already business related. I'm, if I'm correct, Sharon? Yes, I, that's, I that's that so. is the uh, yeah. thinking that was, uh, in, that was being uh, proposed. Mm -hmm. But my thought is, is that if, if, based on what you present saying, this is, this is what it would be like, this is the traffic we have, this is what structures we have on site, these are the impacts to, to all this. It's like you could convince the, uh, the government and the town to say, yeah, that is, that's, that's a reasonable use of the property. It's not going to impact the neighbors. The neighbors will have the opportunity to, uh, to talk about it and weigh in. And you could, and you would have a chance then. I, uh, there, there would be a procedure that would have to be followed. Planning board would have to be involved because, unfortunately, in this town, we do not give out what are called use variances. Okay. Um, Once a bylaw. I, I, I was not trying to represent your expertise. No, no. I'm just, I'm just adding that as, as a additional information because it was an attempt, albeit a minor one, to change a bylaw to allow use that was not that was prohibited in a certain district, mm -hmm. and the ZBA erroneously gave them what's called a use variance, meaning that the land use, the land itself, the boundaries were not changed, but the, the allowed use was. And it was ruled invalid because use variances are not allowed in this town. So in other words, if you wanted to go before the ZBA and say, yes, the bylaw forbids this use in our property, but we would like a variance for that use, you would not be able to do it. But your option would be, if you and your neighbors decided you would like to do this, you could come before planning board with a proposal. We would be willing to study it. We would be willing to, again, have hearings and information sessions. And if the select, with the assistance of the select board, of course, and the advisory committee, this would, as Tom said, be subject to amendment in the same way that we're proposing this. In other words, there would be an amended bylaw put before the town for a vote. And that, that could change the district. It could make it bigger. It could make it a different location. That can't happen now, but that is certainly an option for the future. You know, our, our proposal of what we want to do would be less of an impact than what it is now. There's thousands of cars that go down there every day to our place. If we did such a facility as that, there would be no cars. Well, that would be certainly be something that would be taken into consideration. However, you are located next to a church, and churches are within the buffer zone, have a buffer zone around them. And as you pointed out earlier when we had our informal talk before this meeting, if even if it wasn't allowed use in your area, that would that portion of it would impact your business were you to apply for it at your current property. So these things have to be considered and worked into whatever proposal is is uh, is put before the town, either now or in the future. Oh, well, just for an in instance, I'm a half a mile from the school. But because my property borders the school, that means it's no. The way this bylaw is currently written, that is correct. And that is a recommendation the state has put forward for towns. The, the state has recommended that a buffer zone be included on any use that involves gatherings or use by children. And so that's why we, we followed the state recommendations and that's why we put it into the bylaw. Yeah, but to understand that would that buffer zone would affect the five hundred feet from the his property line to the school, five hundred feet into his property, anything more than five hundred feet 
would not be excluded by its proximity to the school. That's proximity correct. to the church could be an issue because the church is on the side and the school's in the back. As I understand the okay. but, but it's like, but, and I don't, I, mean, I don't remember exactly how the lot lays out and how close the church is and all that. Well, again, it goes to the property line. Mm -hmm. If it went to the church, it would be beyond so, the five hundred mm -hmm. feet. Um, you know, the problem with this discussion is that it, it's very specific to your property, and it's, I've already said that we, we cannot substantially change this. But I we will in it. Right, right. I understand that. And, but I want to make it clear that, you know, the door is open for any subsequent changes to this bylaw, because any bylaw, any zoning bylaw can be changed in time meeting. That's, you know, there is a process involved, and, uh, and planning board would be more than happy to work with you if you decided you want to do that, you know, once we were over this town meeting uh, deadline. Sure, sure. sure. I think let, let's cut to the chase. Yes. If we fail to vote this, someone walks into town and says, I'm going to do this, we have no we have standing. We have no regulation. So, no. so, so the recommendation would be that we vote this so that we have some regulation. And then we then look to amend over time. Do I get this? Yes, exactly. All right. So, so the, the the right thing to do is to have the law on the books, the the zoning bylaws on the books, and then move forward after that with the specific uh, recommendations or interest of uh, a business that wants to be in town. I'm going to throw out one more thing. We cannot prohibit these establishments. Because when the, when the plebiscite, when the statewide vote took place, Brookfield voted for legalizing marijuana. If a town votes for legalizing marijuana, they cannot prohibit marijuana establishments. So the only recourse was to put some regulation in place so that we have some control. And so that anybody coming into town, as for the solar one, would know what the playing field was, so that they would know what the rules were, what the town allowed, and we would not have to go through the same painstaking process of going to town council and custom writing a permit for every single person. Good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're all set. Advisory board, Advisory your recommendation. Board. Recommendation on that. <coughs> uh, <laughs> yes? Oh, that, I just wanted to say we've, we've had a lot of discussion about the marijuana bylaw. Were there any questions on the solar bylaw? Any questions on the solar? I don't know. And Sharon, while they're de deliberating, if there's a decision that can't be made tonight, does Thursday hurt you? I'm not sure you may have heard us. Um, uh, unprepared or we'd have to bring it up at town meeting are we publishing something tonight well, what it, the only the only thing it's going to affect because when we post we Mike is posting tomorrow but it doesn't have the recommendations in the posting the only thing it'll affect is the advisory board and their publication of their warrant okay because that includes it I've right. got that under control uh, okay. we can wait till Thursday right. if you I, I just like to ask the committee you know you know, you know we can either prove this now or, or not we can vote to either support or deny. And if I may, we do have a planning board meeting our next. Any or all of you are welcome to attend. And we do have this on the agenda, just so I can bring the other board members up to date. So if there are any questions that you would have that you'd like to address the entire planning board, we'd be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a motion? I move that the advisory board um, Recommended support for um, the RFP zoning amendments regarding photovoltaic systems and medical marijuana zoning. Um, it, it's, a, it's adult use and medical. Just uh, I, I'll thank you for, for, for adult and medical marijuana use. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? No? Got it. Thank you, everybody. Moving on. Moving on. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. So those were the only two things that you had to get. So those are the only two articles that you had to give recommendations on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So do we want to move on to the operating budget. Yeah. Okay. Um, is he taking my minutes here? 
multitasking. Uh, <laughs> saving costs. <laughs> Did the lawsuit from Mitchell Hill Road get solved against the town by our insurance company? What, what lawsuit? What lawsuit was When she fell over. With the slip and fall, yes, oh. that was taken yeah. care of by our insurance company. Yes. That's oh, that's the one. Okay. okay. Yes. That was taken care of last year, wasn't yes. it? Yeah, that was last year. At first, when you said Mitchell Hill Road, I didn't. <laughs> I thought there was something going on up on Mitchell yeah. Hill. Not yet. Okay. Mike, did you want anything? Okay. He's just sitting again. Um, as far as our budget goes, um, <laughs> as you can see, most most everything is there's a lot of level fund going. There's um, uh, assessor. You know, you, you, we've added grant writer to the general government uh, budget, and I, I, was, I was following your instructions at that point. Um, uh, assessors had some increases. I have a question here on the assessors. You have assessor certification stipend. That. Yes. Um, that is something that has to be taken up at a town meeting because there's a certain chapter in the Mass General Law that has to be adopted by town meeting in order for him to have a certification stipend. And I had talked to the town clerk and he said to his knowledge there wasn't any article passed. So he would have to ha take that up probably in the fall. Because I had done one in the early 2000s when I was certified as town clerk and it was the town clerk and the collector and the, and the treasurer. And the uh, assessor one is a whole separate one. But we should leave it in for budget. I mean, so, so I hear two. But I just don't want him to, but he's got to, um, should know that he just can't go collecting this now. He's got to wait until he brings it up at a town meeting in the fall. Okay, is it not something that can be brought up at this town meeting? Right, no, because the no warrant's article. closed. The warrant's Everything closed. is closed. Yeah. So, so who, okay. who's going to tell Al? Well, I can go in. I can tell yeah, him. Yeah, okay. I'll tell him. All right, great. That, that's, that's, hmm? Is you? No. He won't he be, be in? He won't be in the first time. Oh. But he will be here tomorrow. Yeah. Thursday, he's on vacation. Oh, okay. I'll catch him tomorrow. Um, uh, okay, um, uh, that, that's fine. I, I see no reason not to fund that line. I doubt the town will vote against not giving Oh, yeah, but he just has to have the understanding he can't collect it until it's passed town meeting. Very well, okay. <laughs> um, just rolling through it, treasurer. Um, yeah, I, I, I think there's going to be some discussion about what's the treasurer's salary seen that we and same, same with, with uh, I should not just skip right over this um, town accountant salary um, as far as who you know, what are we paying current town you know town accountant um, there's just a lot of money going around here for people and um, um, and yet everyone's resigned so what are we actually paying people who are doing the job currently like that. I think we need to be able to answer well, that. Well, it came out, well, the town, right now, what we're doing to get uh, everything all straightened out, we're paying right up until FY, the end of FY20, we're paying $50,000 to the accounting firm. Okay. That's a great one. Where is that here? No, because it was done out of FY, we're doing it out of FY19. So, So what we have would be, if yeah. under accountant, what we'll end up doing is that it won't be paid 
via these lines, but no. th the monies are funded by these lines. Yes. So we're not overspending what we pay, paid for no. per personnel. We're, we have an agency that's under contract to us that we're paying based on the monies that are in this account or mm -hmm. these accounts. Yes, well, these accounts. We all understood that. I think it's just a question that someone's going to raise the question and someone, one of the select will have to be ready to respond to that to be able to put it together in two sure. sentences. Well, so well Mr. Kerchief is going to be here also himself. Okay, He's here and uh, the girl is doing our accounting. They're both, they both will be at town meeting. They will be at town meeting. Yes. Yeah, and he, he will be making a statement. And they'll be able to explain the details of yes. how yes. it's affecting the 19 budget and yep. then this, this 20 budget line, this $59,553, mm -hmm. is not going to move, particularly mm -hmm. the salary and, and let's just say the salary line is not mm -hmm. going to move. Yeah. So is the intention that we are contracting with the accounting firm for all of this in your 20s. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're, yeah. yeah. We are. And then, and if we're satisfied with him, then we could contract with him. It would be a lesser fee. Yes, because the, uh, the yeah. 50000 you mentioned included some of this year 19 yes. along yeah. with some residual yes. work um, that's passing. Yeah. And so if we're, done. yeah, like if we're happy with him in FY21, uh, it'll be considered, it'll be about 40000 a year, I think. And for my per would, it, and would it not make sense to amend the budget to change the change the line from account salary to no i would i would leave it where it is i, w I wouldn't touch it okay uh, let's see where we're going because we because we have to see you know where all this goes we got to watch it closely yeah mm -hmm. treasurer salary and mm -hmm. I would not be prepared for an explanation that I think the town of town is ready to do that. That would be great as well. So in other words, well, I don't know if he's going to talk about hers, but I mean that right now we have the interim. So, and what are we paying that person? And, and we've she, also funded a, an additional $4,000 for a consultant. And so, you know, be, between them, there's a 57, almost mm -hmm. $58,000 line here. And, and um, uh, how much are we paying our interim and well she's being paid right now she's being paid 26 an hour and it is coming out of the uh, FY19 salary and if you took probably took a 2% and added 2.5 onto that it would come up more and then the consultant here that came up <coughs> she the reason that she had upped it because they are She's helping her fix. She's a retired treasurer collector from Paxton. And um, they're fixing a lot of problems that have been going on in the office the last few years. So this is what they're doing, and she's helping her along. And she's doing a good job. Lonnie's learning a lot, and she's doing a good job. What are, how many hours do, do, do our town um, employees work? It's Monday through Thursday, correct? Mm-hmm. And then Lanny, Lanny's even been coming in on on Fridays. How many hours, hours? do we pay her to work? I don't know how many hours. We don't know how many hours. Two? I don't know. What, what is it based on, Linda? Do you know? So four days? She's in the four days, and then a lot of times she's in here on uh, Fridays also. Because there's just so much to catch up on in that office. Well, I, I, I don't... I'm just, let's say it's a 40 hour week. Well, I don't think, I don't think she's working a 40 yes, hour work. She's in here by 8.30, isn't she usually? Typically, yes. Typically she's here at 8.30 and then how long is she? Sometimes she stays till four, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, she puts in a, a good day. She puts so, in a good day. So, so at 32 hours per week, at $26 per hour, She's working about 35 hours. Okay. So there's there's forty-three thousand two hundred and sixty-four dollars. So in other words, for an interim less than fully qualified treasurer, we're using almost one hundred percent of our budget for a treasurer that was uh, when we hired that person. When we hired supposed the to be fully qualified and 
capable of doing it by themselves, no? See where I'm going here? You know, it's... Yeah, she's not the, with us any longer. Yes, yeah, the so other treasurer's not, not with us right, anymore. Right. And we had just given her, we had just given her a raise, um, $30 an hour we were going to pay her. Yeah, she was making 30 She was making 30 an hour. So I'm sure that, that that is what this is based on. Didn't you guys have a meeting with her? No. Is that, I mean, we should have, these, these things should have been taken up at a, at a session. Well, well. <laughs> I mean, this is, this well, is a little well, late in the yeah. game. Yeah. Well, well, I know that she. That, that's not, that, not necessarily the case. You know, we, we, we requested a meeting. She wasn't able to make it. And then. Were we informed? No. Okay. Uh, but then, but then uh, our, our town account resigned. Okay. <laughs> And then, and then... Surprise, surprise. Yeah. yeah. Well, variety of things happened at the same time. So in other words, that became less of an issue. Okay? Yes, but the treasurer went out, she went on a, out on a sick leave, and that was back in December. Okay. Um, I'm not here, I'm not here to say, um, uh, we would take full responsibility for Mark meeting face-to-face -face with the treasurer. Okay? <laughs> Um, we're spending $58,000 for, for, for getting a job done that was, you know, at $47,000 and with a person who is, and we're moving forward with a person who is not fully qualified to do that position. So maybe the question for, for this meeting is, what is our plan to advertise um, and, and look for a qualified replacement, fully qualified replacement for town trip? Well, we had talked about leaving her in place, you can correct me. Through the fall. Through yeah. the fall, until you know a lot of these problems are solved because you wouldn't want to go hiring right as of now, you wouldn't want to go hiring a new treasurer and plop them right in the middle of all of this that's going on now. Because she's very, because she's very aware of all the problems right now that we're having. So I guess the other question is, do we think that a fully qualified treasurer, whatever the market would bear, is this the right number to budget? Or yeah, I would, I would budget. I'd that. say, I would say it's very close. Yes, I would say it's very close. With, with the consultant. Yeah, with the consultant. Again, I, I would hope that with the use of the consultant to get the past taken mm -hmm. care of, get yep. through an audit and see where we are yep. to make decisions at that time as to whether or not we change horses. Right now, with the, with a person and a half basically, yeah. we're getting it done. Yeah. Do we like it? We don't. No. But the plan is to get to a point, call it the fall, right? Yep. Yeah. And then and then open up a search to find a treasurer yeah. that can And one of the things that Ms. Coughlin has said in, in in open meeting is that we just don't want to appoint someone. We want to have the process to go through the process to see what resources are available to this town. Yeah. That's, That's what we're gonna we, 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 we made ourselves and specifically uh, Jeff Clark and Taylor uh, available for such a process. If, if he's got a lot of experience with finding people, researching, hiring, that sort of thing, evaluating. But the thing is, though, I mean, for a treasurer, though, Jeff, we need somebody who has municipal experience. You just can't put somebody in that doesn't have municipal experience. No, I, I am, I'm not debating that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying is that we're sort of looking along as far as I'm, I'm this is my personal opinion. And that person had already, I guess we went through the same process with her the previous year, and then she resigned through whatever mm -hmm. claimed, you know, workplace, hazardous workplace or whatever, and now she's back doing the same, you know, job that she was doing before. So, I mean, that we need to have at least a full field of candidates, I think, to... to uh, yeah, we understand that. Yeah. And that's the plan. So it is the plan. Very well. Yeah, that is the plan. That's what we plan on doing. Thank you. Um, there. So two and a half. 
is not in this. So the two and a half isn't in this. Am I correct? Yes, it, is. it is. Oh, it is. Okay. Two and a half is in there. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. I had a question. <clears throat> I had a question here on the highway superintendent wages. We started him at sixty thousand, and you have him as fifty-eight two six four. That's line item one twenty-four. That's probably because I don't recall hearing an update of the salary of the new highway superintendent. I mm -hmm. think that number came over from the budget that Herb submitted when he was still in the position. Yeah, okay, so, so that's... We need, so we, need, we need to, we need to change that. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, here... Um, What's the number, though? 60. 60 we started him at. Okay, and now I know... But when we do a review, I wonder if we should put some more in it. Oof. Yeah. So we owe you on some information by thursday yeah we owe some more information by thursday and because we're going to give him a 90-day review and if we decide to pay him a little bit more we have to have enough money in the in the uh salary to do it and if you don't decide to pay him more is he gone I mean, no no awesome. no 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 that's not it <laughs> well it, it well, you, you know well, well, it's in guess it falls in his court right Right, but, but again, I think we should we should anticipate that at some point during the year, if it's in 90 days or six months, mm. there should be some there will be a review. Yeah, is. Okay. yeah, yeah we need so, some. And Beth's not here this evening, and Beth negotiated the contract. Okay, yeah. so, so whatever the number is. Okay. So, and I have you, it you in the text, so I send, I have it in the text, what the agreement was, so I could, and, and actually I wrote a letter for him that, to agree to, so I have it in You writing. can probably I'll send it, I'll okay. send it tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. okay. And now another question I have here on the highway operator wages, does this include a third person? Because I know you had mentioned when we no, had... No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it includes just the two? Correct. Okay, because I know that Herb had wanted a third person on. Correct. That was... Okay. Never. The new highway person next year would come in and make whatever recommendation needs. Okay. All right. Are there any other things I've been looking it over? Clarence, uh, do you see anything? The, so legal, actually. Oh, oh okay. You yep. have that paid for that email, right? Legal services. What line item is that? It's under hours. <laughs> it's under hours. Okay, 19. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you each have an email from yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We have each of us have an email from Michelle. This is the first time, if I I had read, this is the first time the billing rate has changed in ten years. So, here the billing rate is is the billing rate. Um, our our concern is is a, is a fifty four percent increase from. 19 to 20, and then based upon some, I don't think it's in here either, but a previous information of, of, a, of a substantial overcharge for this year, 19. Right. Weren't they talking about $100,000? They recommended $100,000. Yeah, they recommended it because we have a, we still have a lot of a lot of things in the works. Yeah, no, but so <coughs> for, for, for here it is right here, the last this fiscal year, I have a little bit. So using the see and at the top end FY19 she refers to the estimated hundred thousand mm. legal expense and she breaks it down. Yeah, I think the last time we checked it was already at sixty five that was a month or two ago. It was like another thirty five mm -hmm. yeah. coming in. So we figured it's so so this is this is my money that we will need to address for two thousand for for the budget we're currently mm -hmm. in, and and I don't see it anywhere as far as how we're go, how we're addressing it. it. I assume that if we had free cash, it would be we, we'd be talking about it as part of an article. I, but I really don't know. But what we see are. 2019, we've got an overspend of $35,000. In 2020, they're it recommended that that be a $100,000 line item mm -hmm. as well. We, 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 we're going to uh, uh, 
a level funded at $65,000 across the board, but we wanted to make it 100 grand and just put it to the town. I, I you know, the, the, there needs to be a conversation as to what is the, what's the end game here. With well, she, well, town council will be here and she can probably explain too. I, I think you should advise town council to be fully ready to explain what's going on okay part of the things i'd like to see is some of the you know uh you know uh, of the decisions that have been made what sort of pro progress are we making on like cleanups on on the on the um holcraft properties and various things like this dave holcraft sat here two months ago and you know point black said hey he's going to challenge every single one of these things um, um uh, I would like a much clearer idea as to what is the status of this and what is what is our legal found, you know, are, are we are we spending throwing good money after bad or 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 or, or not? And, and anyone else, you know, this this be the nature of our concern in our conversation. So let's start with the conversation I had earlier this <coughs> evening where I explained Today you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I invited you to come here at two o'clock tomorrow to sit with Lucas and talk about his discussions with DOT because this town paid a ton of money for a land taking at White's Landing that we paid for. DOT said that it was good, $7,000 was okay. And it wasn't mm -hmm. okay because she lost, the court agreed that she lost business and will continue to lose business because her ability to launch boats at that site has been taken away. So we ended up paying eight times that number where I am with, with Lucas and working with Lucas is to recoup the town's expenditure of the, or at least a portion of those dollars because the town should, should not have had to have, have been impacted by that ta land taking. Mm -hmm. Specific to Mr. Holcraft, Mr. Holcraft has paid $6,000. That's not found here, but he's paid $6,000 in court costs mm -hmm. and attorney's fees up until this time. He goes before a judge on July the 5th that judge will make a determination as to whether or not he's paid the some $20,000 worth of fines that have been weighed, weighed against mm -hmm. him. So if I take the $100,000 and I take the fines that he's owed, that gets back to $80,000. He's paid six, but he owes more in legal, town legal expenses. So we go from 80 back to 75 or 70. Mm -hmm. So now we're arguing about 65 going to 70, just with that one K, one, well, in the case of, of uh, White's Landing, we, we, pro we're t we probably t are talking $40,000 that we're going to uh, hopefully recoup by splitting the deal with DOT. So that, that's 40 there. We're looking at Holcraft at 20 in fines, another six that he's paid that, again, isn't found here. I get back to the 65 pretty quickly. So I don't yeah. have a problem with telling the townspeople that next week. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's the first time I mean, we've heard that reveal, so that's great. I mean, there's, there's a plan, there's a strategy, and hopefully everything specific, works out. Yeah. Specific to yeah. 6 South Maple, if we talk about that for a moment, the court found in four out of five cases to the town, and the one case that they, that they didn't, I wouldn't, shouldn't say they didn't find it towards the town, what they said is that he was able to appeal one of the counts on his freedom of information so that that is yet to be determined but on the four other counts that they found for the town and those are those are like zoning laws or something yes it's correct mm -hmm. um and and he, and and um uh if he were to reapply or whatever else i mean would it not go away i mean why can't he just i, I, I you know in other words He's got an existing business, an existing structures, and everything else. Um, are, are cases saying those no longer apply? What, what, I'm not sure what our stance is. What is what is the town's position? Right. And he can't be there? Yeah, that's what we found. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a permit to operate a business. He in violation of the zoning mm -hmm. laws of this town. And we let it stand from 2003. We're passing, oh. cleaning up since. Yeah, he's been cleaning up since, and he had another ex extension was to win. 
He was given another extension to clean up the um, Lake Road property. But, but I, I think to the fifth. <laughs> to the he, fifth. He, the court finding on the fifth is if it's not cleaned up by the fifth, that's he can July be. July fifth. Ju no. Oh, June fifth. Next okay. week or no, today tomorrow. or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. He, he's before a judge. Yeah, he's before the judge. Yeah. And it says incarceration if he doesn't pay his fines and everything else. So I, I think as, as long as it's explained that way to the town, mm -hmm. I don't see there to be a, a big claim on the 65 to 100. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think we're having fun doing this, guys. No, we're not. I, I, did I say you were? No. Wrong? And then we have. I, 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 I'm just saying is that it, it, someone's going to ask the question. And, and then also we still have uh, the motocross track down there with uh, Mr. Plurid, and he has filed against against the ZBA also. Again, something came in today. Yeah, but I figure that's if the other ones are resolved. I mean, that's certainly we start working. Bear one with, with one of the other. Well, what we're not counting, and, and maybe we shouldn't, but we're going to have to pay the bill. And the, the 100000 she's talking about is we're paying the bill. In this particular case, we at least have two suits where there's going to be returned to mm -hmm. the town. Right. right. Uh, Clarence, that money that gets paid to us, is that going to have mm -hmm. to um, process through as free cash before it becomes available for allocation? Yeah, I'm sure that's, uh, that's... Okay, that's what I expected. It goes yeah. back to the general fund. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that I heard was um, there was a question to the Board of Selectmen about what is the end game. And Linda, you responded, well, town council will be there. I would like that answer, that question, to my mind, should be answered by the elected leadership of the town. What are we attempting to do? The lawyers are acting on your instructions. Well, I the just lawyer, meant by that. Me? OK, all right. The, the lawyers are doing what you're telling them to. So the question is, what are we attempting to, I think the, what, what, what is the end game is, what are we attempting to accomplish with all of this legal activity? That is a question I would like to hear answered, and I think people in town would like to hear answered. And I think, and I think it's important to tell people, this is, we are spending your money to these ends. We had a solid waste yeah. site at 90 Lake Road. Yeah. It's been that way right. for a number of years. On Google Maps, you can look at it for forever. And should the DEP fly over with his helicopter, right, Mr. 22 years of drone. Yeah. So if if they were to come, the town would then end, end up to be liable if we took no action. We took an action. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not question. I guess I'm saying, I was asked, that question was asked more on behalf of the town in that I think a lot of people are asking that question. And so, and as appointed representatives of the town in the budget process, I am asking that question on behalf of the people of the town. And I think that that's something that people of the town on the floor they will deserve. want to hear an answer to. Yeah, sure, they deserve I, it. I, 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 I know, I, I mean, we have Ken on, and we hear from the Conservation Commission, his role in the Conservation Commission, we hear a lot about <laughs> the status of Mr. Holcraft's properties from a uh, conservation and, and similar. It's never ending. No. Um, I, I hope we do get to an end. What, what I meant when I said the town council would be there, if the town had questions to ask about any of these suits, she could, you know, any of our litigation, that she is here to answer questions also. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what yeah. I meant. Okay, yeah, the, I, I agree the uh, council would be, um, detailed status and, um, and updates like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. I mean, personally, the, the big point I was trying to make is that not everyone is aware of the history and everything else. I came in cold because of the yellow sign that was up wherever it was out there. You're not up there yet? And I still haven't heard all of the, the background. I'm hearing some of it now, now mm -hmm. from you. Um, so I think, again, this is my personal feeling is that as as selectmen you might remember that there is a there are people come and go in the town so again um, i can use my abilities much better if i had the information to be able to help you know with the right <coughs> positivity here and, and everyone else and, and doing our job for the budget we have some of the background also and that's that's more what we've been trying to work through the last couple of years so i appreciate it
giving us the information. Hopefully, you know, you know, the town meeting will go smoothly if people hear that, but I, mean, I think that, that will come up. Uh, I, that's all we had to identify with the town budget. I, I, you know, we have already blessed this whole thing. I, I'm not sure what else needs to be done here tonight. Uh, I had a couple of questions for you regarding this document. This is kind of start. Do we have the article on the board so we can get enough money to keep our zoning office going? Seems that he's running in debit. I mean, I know he's doing a lot of work. Oh, do you mean he's running low? Well, he should probably see... Zero. He's at a zero point. Well, he should probably see the accountant when she's in here. She was in here on Tuesdays. And he should probably come in and see her and find out where some money is because she's been correcting a lot of problems. On a related question, is the accountant generating updated um, account positions? I know um, how the sad, the balance of the accounts... I know yes, the ledgers. Yeah, yeah the ledgers. Saying, yeah, she's doing the ledgers. Okay. Um, we, would it be possible to ask for a, um, as she updates the, I don't know what her schedule is, but a, um, if she's do, if she's running stuff through weekly at, at some point in the, a regular point in the week, if she could cut reports and send them to us? Yeah. In fact, I did give her uh, your email addresses. I don't know how often. How often do you send them out? Yeah, weekly reports. Yeah, she usually does. No, Carrie used to do it Carrie monthly. Used to, well, Carrie would do it weekly. She did? Yes. I thought it was monthly. Maybe towards the end it was monthly, but it used to be weekly. weekly. But basically, I, I don't know how many she sent. I think she only sent out one, the new accountant. Since she's the been new here. accountant, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not sure what her schedule is, but I will definitely remind her yes. and ask for the send. Yeah, and my, my thought is if it's... I think monthly is okay. Yeah. It's just but when she gets those, mm. a copy could be a soft copy could be sent. Yes, we told her. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, because she she's thing. been straightening out a lot of the different um, deficits and things that are okay. that mm -hmm. are on the budget okay. on the um, okay. ledger sheet. Yeah. I, I, I understand. There's a bit of work. And, and I'll send numbers. you. She sent. Oh no, yeah, she's That's been work. Well, she's awesome. been working yeah. at it at home yeah. too, like on third. You know, at home too, not just here at the town hall. Yeah. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. <coughs> Regarding the warrant, uh, um, I, I intend to produce a statement like last year. Um, capital had something from Capital Capital Improvement. I'm wondering if, if, if you've heard anything from them, perhaps we could chime in. Uh, there was a statement of article recommendations. Now, there's not a heck of a lot for anyone to recommend on. Yeah. Okay. Please do. I, I, I mean, I, Beth gave us. Yeah, Beth gave us when we met. Yeah, when we met two meeting. weeks ago, mm -hmm. Beth had sat in on the meeting. She and she said that everything, I guess they they recommended everything that we talked well, about. If you look, isn't that you know, what she everything said? Everything that she told me, I put in there. I'm not sure if it included yeah. everything, like one of the transfers. I think it didn't. Although they consider a transfer, the CIPC considered yeah. that still a capital item. Whatever she had, because yeah. if you notice, she was looking from her yeah. notes. That was placed in there. It might not reflect all, but that's the information we had, and that's what we left with. Okay. There's no chat or anything. You're meeting with the, Peter to Yeah, yeah. If, if, if there's any sort of state that they'd like to incorporate into this document. Well, it's Peter. But Peter was out. Is, is he still here? I think he is. He was here yesterday. Hmm. Oh, he was here yesterday. I saw him next to me. Not going to be back for the town meeting. He told me. So I don't know. Oh, mm -hmm. no, Clarence said he saw him. I saw him last oh, night. Oh, then he's back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then yeah. I had wrong yeah. information. Okay. There we go. Anything else? Questions from advisory issues? Everyone? We're, we're, we're as good as you're going to be. As good as you're going to be. And then we will, then on the. Next fr next Friday the fourteenth we'll be meeting at six o'clock. We'll have a joint yeah. meeting. I have a thought. Yes. What is your thought? I think we should share the thought that uh, with the discussion that we had this evening on the two articles, yeah. and knowing that there's thirty odd articles, we really should be thinking about a contingency of it not being midnight. Yeah. Yes. So really, I look to. I don't think it should. I don't know if we want to go on after 10 o'clock. Uh, I'd say cut it cut between it to 9.30 and yeah, 9.30 and 10, and then we'll continue 
on the 21st. I would say 9.30, that's three hours in. Yeah. Unless we're really close to finishing and you can, we think we can power through it in half an hour, that's where I draw a line. Right. Would there be a sense in grouping the spending articles just as we did tonight? And, it, it, you know, with an explanation that this is, there, there's no free cash, this is just sort of business type stuff. Um, you might get some discussion of library or something. That or street lights, but the um, library will definitely be a discussion. Oh, yeah, the library is going to be a discussion, and then I'm sure with some of the different um, citizens' petitions, there's going to be discussion. I'm sure there will be a lot with Sharon's also, and so that's why, you know, we'll have, I think, Sh 9 Sharon, 30, you, 10 o'clock. Did, did you realign them so that marijuana is first and solar is second? She, she, I think you wanted solar first, right? Isn't that what you wanted? Yeah, yes. yes, and I, I guess. asked for solar first because we already had solar right. in town, mm -hmm. and I think I that was a known quantity. And if we went with marijuana first, I think the discussion was likely to be more protracted, yeah. and it would prevent the second yeah. Sony so Bylaw from mm -hmm. solar so first. So at that point, we'd be looking at June twenty first. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But I didn't want to leave here tonight without that in our minds. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it did. Yeah. And there's some good stuff that'll come out that yeah. we can we get on this so everybody knows. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're positive. I mean, I'm, we, we're, feeling, we're feeling much more buttoned up on the process. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank so, you. If there isn't anything else, uh, I'd like a motion to adjourn at 8. 40. You have that motion. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. We've got to go in and sign in. <laughs>